Hey, I'm Charlie from Alexpo, and I'm here with Jen Cohn. Far, how are you doing today? I am so happy to talk to you. I missed you, Charlie. It's nice <laughs> to talk to you again. Oh, well, you say that. It's been over over a year now since we spoke, and even over a year since we last saw each other. You, you've been on like the circuit. You've been on the, the Watch League. You've been to all these conventions. How's it been? It has been, it has been so exciting, and it has been really mind blowing to meet all of these people. When I started it, and I started it almost, I started my job in it almost four years ago. I had no idea the influence it would have, how far reaching it would be, how much it would bring so many people together, how how great a force it would be in the world. And for me, I had no idea. So it's been outrageous. It's been crazy. Yeah, and when I saw you and you, your interview was the first Overwatch interview I had given. So you're really you're the my my start point, <laughs> I think, of with this part of the journey. I mean, obviously, voicing Farah is the the beginning of the journey, but in terms of this part of the ride, you were the beginning. Well, thank you, <laughs> but it's it's sure. very much like a. Because I think when when we spoke, you hadn't been to any conventions, but you, you knew it was it was big. Uh, but I, I guess now you've got that extra experience of like, holy, like this is huge. What's what's the uh, best thing you've been asked to sign at a convention? Well, the thing that blows me away the most when I have to sign something is when people make their own cosplays of Farah, mm -hmm. and they make their their own pieces. And so I've signed a lot of helmets, and I've signed some armor. And the cosplay is outrageous. Uh, the level of, of attention and the mechanized wings and the, the armor is incredible. I, I just, I can't even get over that. And it's so <laughs> creative and beautiful and, and takes so much time. And when I meet couples who have made, you know, far, one is Farah, one is Mercy, I love that. And they spend months together sitting and working on them. That, that's blown my mind. Um, I I just I love it. Um what else has been amazing? I've signed a couple of arms. Um I I haven't ever seen somebody make the arm into a tattoo. I haven't seen that posted with me tagged. Yes. I know Lucy has seen that where she signed somebody's arm <gasps> and they they made it into a tattoo. What? But I had a couple yes, her signature. They did a they would do a mercy tattoo with Lucy's signature. But I've signed a couple of arms. I've never seen it come to fruition. So that would be the most outrageous. But that and the cosplay. The cosplay is crazy. Have, have you ever, uh, when are we going to see you in a Farah cosplay? I don't know that I'm ever going to wear full on Farah cosplay. Although a couple of people have said that they'd make me helmets, which I would love. <laughs> but I do have a thing for like fashion armor. Mm -hmm. um, and my friends. Did you meet them when I was in London? Uh, yes, might not. Tim and... Uh, well, you met Tim and Moy, who yes. are amazing. Who, oh, they're geniuses. They're brilliant. But my friend Una Burke, uh, Una and Emmett, Una makes this leather armor. Uh, oh. She's an Irish designer, and she's based out of London. And she makes these incredible, like, you know, chest pieces and shoulder pieces. And they're those, I have a few of those. So I really need to start wearing those on the circuit more. Because that's, I think that's as close to cosplay full on that I'm gonna get. I remember the last time we spoke, I asked you what um, kind of stuff you thought Farah would wear, and you instantly shot back with saying that she'd wear late sixteen Balenciaga. <laughs> is that still still the case, or is or has something ha happened since where you think she might? Well, definitely, she'd rock a bunch of this Una Burke stuff that I'm saying. Um, <laughs> since then, wow, since then. First, Farah's gotten a bunch of skins. Yes. And that, so that's changed the game. And the skin that I've been most excited about is when I wore my pair of, uh, of Vetement Flame Boots that yes. I mentioned in your interview <laughs> to BlizzCon. Then there was a bunch of fan art of it. And mm -hmm. then a bunch of you know, fan art people made amazing skins with the flames. And uh -huh. my hope is that at some point Farah will have a flame skin. Because that would be, I mean, then I would feel like the whole thing has really <laughs> come full circle. Our then we'd all life. really <laughs> gone the full distance. But when I see people designing Farah outfits, 
the thing that the, the I, I've seen a couple of jumpsuits and it looks unbelievably like this Nadia Tar jumpsuit that uh-huh. I have. I have this Nadia Tar <laughs> wide legged deep V jumpsuit in a navy blue that looks like about four or five different fan art casual Farah going out in the evening dresses. <laughs> And then she's wearing it with what looked like my uh, Annalise Michelson gold cuff bracelet. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, God, like they're in my closet designing Farah's clothes. So that's very cool. And then the other thing, obviously, is you see her with lots of jeans and moto jackets and mm. white T-shirts. But I tend to go toward the fashionier items. <laughs> um, speaking of fashion, the last time we spoke, I asked you what your uh, favorite the fashion thing you owned was, I guess, your article of clothing. And I, you answered the flame boots, but you gave me another answer that escapes me. Have you, have you bought a- anything particularly outrageous since the last time we spoke? <laughs> or what's the most yes. outrageous, actually? <laughs> yes, I have. I have acquired a couple more pairs <laughs> of those kinds of boots. I got a metallic silver pair and a black patent pair, but that's because <laughs> I'm a sick person and I'm addicted to them. Um, oh, and I have a pair of blue ones with white stars mm-hmm. that I think of as being very Farah-ish. So I, I got those. Um, recent great acquisitions, I got a dress by a British designer named uh, Anthony and Allison. Mm-hmm. It's a shift dress of an Empire State Building. What? It's a black dress with this incredible Empire State Building on it. So I love that. That's a new acquisition that I am crazy about. And then I got uh, from a brand called Tome. I had been obsessed with this rainbow dress with this tube skirt thing over it. And I just got that and I haven't worn it yet. So I'm really looking forward to that. And I think I'm going to wear that on my vacations coming up soon. And... What else? Have I gotten anything else exciting? And I'm waiting for fall stuff. So that's, Uh, oh, and then I got these statement socks, but it involves cursing on them. They look like tube socks. (laughs) They're these tube (laughs) socks. And they say mother on one and effer on the other. (laughs) I adored them. And I saw this very fashiony girl downtown who was wearing an outfit that involved tube socks with pants tucked in. Mm-hmm. And I said, oh my gosh, I need to wear an outfit like that. And then I saw <laughs> those socks and said, those are the socks I'll wear. So, th- so those, are, those are the craziest new acquisition, the, the, the dirty mouth socks. <laughs> Brilliant. So yeah. with all the convention stuff, because of all the VAs being spread about as far as like China and Egypt, you haven't got to speak to everyone so much, but you've uh, had, I guess, a fair amount of time to hang with um, some of the voice actors. Do you have any stories? Who, who's super nice? Oh, God. Well, first, what's cool is that everybody is really nice. Mm-hmm. So I can't say anything bad. Like, everybody is super, super cool and really fun and, and funny and kind. Um, Theo, Theo, Theodore Chin, who plays mm-hmm. Zenyatta, just came and stayed with me in New York with his girlfriend, Jessica. And that was really fun. I, it was just really fun. And Theo and I had been in the Philippines together, and then we were in Texas together. Uh-huh. And so then when he and Jessica came to New York, they came and stayed, which was so cool. Oh. Um, I've done a couple now with Anjali. I've done a couple with Carolina. Anjali is uh, is Symmetra, and Carolina is Sombra. Uh, we were the, all of us with Theo were in the Philippines together, and now we were just together in Florida. Um, uh, Chloe and I, who plays Widowmaker, Chloe is a dear friend as well, and she's awesome. And she and I were together in Atlanta, and then we were just together again uh, in Florida, and we had been together at BlizzCon, and that was both of us, like, sort of with our, our minds exploding over how incredible the whole Blizzard and Overwatch experience was. God, I mean, I feel like I could just make the list. I can keep <laughs> listing. I can keep listing. I, the the gang is awesome. The gang is cool. Andrea did a good job. <laughs> she did. She really did. I mean, in addition to making, making really cool choices of nice people who'd all want to hang out together and who all really like each other, She's like, she's a visionary. 
She had such incredible vision with everyone. I met Sar, who does the voice of Doomfist, and he and I have become friends. He also lives in New York, so I've gone to see his show, and he's just, he's awesome. And she, seven years before casting him, had seen him in a Broadway production called Fela, about Fela Kuti. Uh And she remembered him so vividly that when it came time to cast the Doomfist character, she just, she's like going through these auditions and she goes, wait a second, wait, wait, the guy, the guy who did Fela, that's who I need. And she found his manager and he'd never done a voiceover before. And she sent the script and he did it and he was Doomfist. Wow. So uh, she she just, she sees through everyone. She understands exactly how to cast everyone. She's really brilliant at what she does. Crazy. Speaking of yeah. um, Andrea and the whole Blizz family, last time we spoke, you were very, very excited to go to your first ever BlizzCon. How was it? <laughs> <laughs> you know... No matter what anyone would have said, I just, I was not prepared. <laughs> was not prepared. I did not know what I was coming to to experience. Um, I showed up. I had spent the uh, some of the week uh, being part of the negotiating committee for my union, for SAG, for the animation committee. Oh, yeah. And so I'd come from there and it was Friday and I was tired and I knew the next day I was going to, you know, BlizzCon, which would be great. And I just, I show up at this hotel with my bag and I'm tired and I'm schlepping, I'm just dragging my bag. And I go into the lobby and there are thousands of people partying in this lobby. And I, it just, for what, I, I didn't realize, I just didn't know. And there are thousands of people. And as I walk in, there are people going, Jen Cohn, it's Jen Cohn, it's Paul, <laughs> it's Jen Cohn. And I went, what? 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 Oh, my God. And I went, I got my keys to my room. I went up to my room. And I had to decide whether I was going to go back down or not. Because I was just not prepared. I just <laughs> didn't. I just wasn't ready. I was like, oh, my gosh, wow. So I, like, I put on some lipstick. I went back downstairs. I saw everybody. I started talking to everyone. And going the next day and meeting all of these incredible people, these incredible fans who are all there and going out onto the, onto the stage and seeing, I mean, thousands of people mm-hmm. waiting to hear from us on our panel, I just, I was overwhelmed. And as overwhelmed as I was with that, I was as overwhelmed with the warmth and with the family vibe and with how cool everyone was. Um, it was so lucky. It was so lucky. I just kept pinching myself. I kept forcing myself to be present. It's that thing that you do in those moments in life when you realize you're having one of those experiences that won't happen again, Mm -hmm. or, or that's so extraordinary that if you let it fly by, it'll just be gone and you won't be able to savor it, that you have to force yourself to slow down and just be really present and really take it in. I remember a bunch of times that day and during that panel, really being present. I I just, I couldn't get over it. Yeah, it was amazing. (laughs) Wow. You said a second ago that Farrah's got all, all these skins. Do you have a favorite? I have two favorites. I love Asp because Asp is so freaking gorgeous mm-hmm. and great and i love mecha queen <laughs> i think mecha queen is so fantastic and i got to meet jackie craft uh the cosplayer uh-huh. who does who did it an insane mecha queen like a, just an incredible mecha queen and i got to do a panel with her uh in north carolina together it was it, she her her skin was outrageous her cosplay was just crazy um <laughs> but i had loved mecha queen before that and then to see her in it i just I, wow amazing brilliant so a few of the um characters I, I say a few it's probably close on 10 now uh their backstories have been explored through cinematics mm-hmm. he's like wonderfully animated i'm sure you've seen a bunch of them uh, so there's like there's one that focuses on May, there's one that focuses on Bastion. Would you be interested if the opportunity arose to do a far cinematic? Would I be interested? <laughs> I've been asking for one. I was like, I want one. When do I get mine? 
I need one. Um, uh, I was told that there was one that was written, but it would have been too expensive to produce. Wow. <laughs> so yes. So I asked. I, I asked repeatedly. I'm like, please, can we make another one? Write me one that's expensive. So I'm hoping that they'll make me one that 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 can be uh, be afforded to be produced. <laughs> What's the um, recording process like for Blizzard? Do you go to LA or do you do it in New York? Most of the time I record in New York. I have recorded one or two sessions in LA and I actually recorded one session in Paris because oh. um, I was there for Fashion Week and oh, that's when they needed me to record. So I went to the studio where Chloe usually records. Mm -hmm. um, but most of the time I record in New York. A session is usually four hours, but occasionally they, if, if it's just a quickie, they can just book you for two hours, mm -hmm. but it's usually four. Um, they don't give you the script in advance, so you have no idea what you'll be recording, and you just show up, and they give you a stack of paper, mm -hmm. and you aren't given any time in advance. It's not like you have a half an hour to read it before you start. You are recording it in real time as you're reading it. Wow. So, yeah, which which can be intense once you're deep into a character, because mm -hmm. if you're just doing a random line here or there for someone you're not invested in, that it can be uh, it can be I don't know somehow easier or less stressful. But once you know your person, like you want to know who they're talking to and what's <laughs> going on and who are they dealing with, and you don't necessarily have that because you're not reading a whole script. You just have a list of lines. Yeah, it's just pages of lines. And when I record, I have a voice director and Michael Chu, the head mm -hmm. writer, is almost always on. And if I don't understand the context or if I don't understand what I'm re re responding to or what the situation is, I can say, Michael, what's going on? Who is this to? What is this in response to? And then I know who I'm talking to or what it's about. <laughs> Brilliant. Yeah. So Blizzard's home is in uh, California. But New York isn't like exactly devoid of Overwatch stuff. The Overwatch League Grand Finals <laughs> were in New York City, and it was a huge thing. And you were there. Tell me about that. <laughs> Charlie, this again is one of those things where I had absolutely no idea. I had been so jealous because... A bunch of my Overwatch friends, other VAs, had gone to see in, to the, the arena in LA and had seen the games. And I'd heard about going to see the games and I'd heard about shout outs. And I said, Oh, that sounds so great. That's so terrific. And I really want to go. And when I heard that the, that the grand finals were going to be in New York, I wrote to a couple of the people from Overwatch League and said, I'd really love to come. And they were like, Oh my God, we'd love for you to come. Do you want to be <laughs> in on the action? And I said, Sure. Just, you know. Sure, great. <laughs> and I know it's at Barclay Center. Great, terrific. And I go. And <laughs> from where I was, I got to see the crowd. And it was a packed Barclay Center. I mean, there were, I think it was almost 13,000 people. It was 12, it was 12,500, something like that. It was, it was a, over 12,000 people. In a in an almost in, an, in a full Barclay Center, it was insanity. It was so exciting, and just overwhelming. And DJ Khaled opened the <laughs> show, and I love DJ Khaled because he's so positive and so funny, and I don't know, such a such a creature of his own invention. I'm I'm just I'm into that guy. <laughs> so I was super excited that he was there, and then getting to go be on the screen and on the mic with the show was so outrageous and meeting I mean that was it was crazy I mean to be in a room of that many people who all are on the same page and to get to meet the fans obviously the fans from New York but the fans from Philly and the fans from London and there were so many people from London <laughs> which was wonderful um it was great it was great. It was really exciting. And I was as invested in both teams, as one as the other, so I was happy when London won. Uh, it was great. It was cool. Brilliant. So we know that you, you um, and all the PAs, you have to be careful. 
But uh, somebody from Reddit would like to know what's your opinion on the pharmacy shipping. Oh, you know, I know I'm supposed to be careful with this, but I'm such a fan of the whole pharmacy ship. I'm a fan of the pharmacy ship. I am a fan of the pharmacy community. I love having an opportunity to stand for the LGBT community and LGBTQ rights, and I am I am totally in favor. Brilliant. Uh, you... Another pre blizzcon thing is you're really excited to meet your, your mom in game. Yes. Did you get to speak with her? I didn't mention this. That's terrible. Yeah, that was honestly one of the major highlights. When Aisha and I met, <laughs> Aisha who's the VA, she came up and she went, oh, daughter, my <laughs> and gave me a ring with an eye of Horus on it. Oh. And yes, that she brought me from Egypt. And she and I hit it off in the biggest way. It was so wonderful, and we hung out the whole time. It was she, Chloe, and I. And then for and I was in LA for an extra couple of days. She, Chloe, and I hung out in Venice. We hung out on the canals. And she and Chloe continued to hang out. And then I think she went for Chloe's birthday to Paris, and Chloe yes. went to, vid- to visit her in Egypt. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, so uh, she is so fabulous. She is such a brilliant powerhouse, awesome woman. I loved meeting her. She's funny and cool, and she was completely blown away as well, like knocked out by the mm. whole situation. I mean, she also she, that was her first convention, like me. So both of us were just wide-eyed and, and stunned. It was so cool. Brilliant. So on the VAs, because you mentioned you and Chloe have became friends as of you and Aisha um is there like a place where you guys keep up when you're not at cons like is there like is there an overwatch group chat on whatsapp (laughs) there are several (laughs) there are several I have several it depends on which groups there are mini groups there are larger groups there are you know there are there's the the, you know each con has a group um (laughs) Yes, we we definitely all have group texts going, <laughs> group chats for sure. Yeah, and then single side chats. So oh. it's, it's terrific. <laughs> Brilliant. Have have you um made yourself familiar with any Arabic at all? <laughs> should shouldn't I? I really should. Um, no, I haven't, and I should. That's terrible. No, I haven't, and and. I haven't been asked to say anything in Arabic for the game, and that would be that would be smart if I did. I mean, so far the the best thing ever that I've said regarding Arabic was somebody asked me about if uh, if I if I was at all Egyptian, and I got to answer that yes, many thousands of years ago, my people escaped from Egypt. We <laughs> we were led out of Egypt by Moses, but that's that. You no, know, I don't know any Arabic, and I should. You know what? Maybe I do know some Arabic because I know Hebrew. So I know some like Arabic phrases because they're in Hebrew. 